Good morning and welcome to this special online edition of Sunday Square Off. I'm Bram Resnick. Voting by mail and in person for Arizona's August 4th primary has been underway for about three weeks. Primary day just nine days away. Joining us now for a rundown of the top races on the ballot, Kirk Adams, former Republican Speaker of the Arizona House and former Chief of Staff to Governor Doug Ducey. He's now President of Concilium Consulting here in Phoenix. And on the Democratic side, election law attorney Roy Herrera. He's a former Capitol Hill staffer for Congressman Ed Pastor. Welcome to you both. Thank you. And uh, before we get started, are there any disclosures from each of you about any of the races we're going to be talking about, any involvement you might have? Kirk, anything from you? No. And Roy? Yes, uh, I am providing legal services for both Mark Kelly and Joe Biden's uh, combined campaign here in Arizona. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that. Uh, let's start at the top of the ticket, the Republican Senate primary. Conventional I wisdom is that Martha McSally should beat uh, businessman and first-time candidate Daniel McCarthy. Uh, polling shows that McSally, however, is consistently trailing Mark Kelly in a general election matchup in November, Republican versus Democrat. Kirk Adams, I'm going to start with you and bring up something you said five weeks ago to NBC News. You said McSally essentially has six to eight weeks in this campaign to remain viable in the national conversation as competitive. Well, five weeks in, has McSally done enough to tell you she can be competitive in November? Well, we're beginning to see some of the polls uh, narrow between McSally and Mark Kelly. But look, I stand by that. I think by the time you get to Labor Day, if Martha McSally is well with outside the margin of error, decisions will have to be made from outside groups about how much money they're going to spend. But I do want to say that, you know, uh, Mark Kelly has obviously raised an amazing amount of money. You do have to start to question is there a point of diminishing returns? Martha clearly has enough to wage a professional campaign and get her message on air. And there's a ways yet to go, but there's no doubt about it. Mark Kelly has been running a fantastic campaign to this point. He's more than well-funded. And every poll that you see, that I see, both public and private, shows him outside the margin of error. So McSally has some work yet to do. Uh, I'm going to stay with you, Kirk. Could we see a surprise in this primary, given the really pro-Trump mood uh, of the, uh, the Republican base? Could Daniel McCarthy surprise? I'm not saying win, but do better than anybody might expect. Daniel McCarthy has as much of a chance as a snowball does in July in Phoenix. <laughs> I've never seen a stranger uh, candidate or campaign, at least in in recent years. Um, no, I don't think there's any chance that Daniel McCarthy presents a credible risk to Martha McSally in the primary. Roy, uh, Kirk's words must be music to your ears as, as somebody <laughs> uh, supporting Mark Kelly. What about that question about diminishing returns? Because what's interesting about the money is, I think Martha McSally has raised roughly the same amount she raised in 2018 against Kirsten Cinema. Mark. Kelly, however, has raised what both of them to combined raised so far. Are there diminishing returns or in the way campaigns are being run now with really out much person to person contact, digital and TV advertising is going to suck up more of that cash? Well, I mean, like I think Kirk would agree, I'd rather always be on a campaign that has more resources than less resources. But to your point, right. I mean, McSally has raised a lot of money, and if she was running against anyone else, I think she would be in a great financial position. But Mark Kelly is a unique candidate, and he's raised more money um, than really any other Senate uh, candidate in the country, uh, and that's put you know Martha at, at a deficit. Uh, and certainly, to, you know, to Kirk's point, uh, we have seen a lot of polling in this race that has Mark Kelly up by pretty significant margins. I do think that the national environment may affect what the Republicans decide to do here. You know, when Senate control is uh, up for grabs nationally and Mitch McConnell starts seeing, you know, places like Maine and North Carolina and even now maybe Texas as competitive, you know, at some point they have to make a decision on doing some triage and protecting some of their other candidates. And I think if nothing improves here, that's we, that may be what you see. 
And polling indicates Martha McSally is running behind President Trump in Arizona. He's much right. trailing Joe Biden, but but still much closer. Uh, Kirk Adams, you said Labor Day. Uh, Roy Herrera, would you agree? Is that pretty much the cutoff for when you've got to decide where your money is going, especially given the Senate might be in the balance here? It's got to be at some, you know, at some point soon, I think. Now, that being said, I mean, we are about 100 days out from the general election. A lot of things can change. You know, certainly from the Mark Kelly perspective, you know, they're, they're running things like they're behind. I think that's the right attitude to have. You know, Mark Kelly, I don't think, you know, knowing him how I do, is not somebody that's going to take any kind of lead for granted. And so they're going to continue to work hard all the way through the general election. And then also considering that the presidential uh, candidate and election is going to be very competitive here. I think you're just going to see a continuous amount of money spent through November. Um, but there it does reach a point where I think McConnell does have to make a decision on what his Senate focus groups do nationally. And, and Kirk, I'll end this discussion with you. I was doing a thought experiment wondering, what if uh, Congressman Andy Biggs of Gilbert or say Debbie Lesko of Peoria, President Trump loves them both. What if they had primaried McSally? Could they have won and perhaps done better in the general? Look, I think uh, uh, one of those two would have mounted a much more credible primary challenge to Martha McSally. There's a reason why they didn't get in those races. And I, my guess is victory was not assured. Um, I don't know that you can say at this point that either one of them would have mounted a more credible uh, statewide race than Martha McSally. She is the sitting United States Senator. She is a prodigious fundraiser. Uh, she's won a lot in Arizona in the past. And last time there was well over $20 million spent establishing or attempting to establish the Martha McSally brand. That's a tough thing for anybody to compete against in the primary. And clearly the president has embraced uh, Martha McSally and that certainly would have helped her in this hypothetical primary matchup that you pose.